All right. Good morning, uh, Revolution. Um, good morning, Anita and, and Michael. Let's all take turns saying good morning, Revolution. Normally, uh, Joe leads it off, but Joe and Rosanna are away uh, today and, and won't be able to join us. So, so go good morning, Anita. Revolution. I'll say it. Good morning, <laughs> Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. So, um, what are we talking about today? Uh, you know, the, now that the coup's over, we talked about that last week, we got to move on to something else, right? <laughs> right, and is the fascist danger actually over, as Michael was pointing out off before we got on, that, you know, just because the coup might be finished, I don't think he can, you know, will take any steps between now and uh, Biden's inauguration because uh, that would can you know lead to his conviction in the Senate. So I think it's it it's really calmed uh, things down for the next week anyway. We'll, okay, we'll see. Um, I hope I'm right there. Yeah, I hope so, Michael. Um, what, what's what's your assessment uh, of you know is the the event that we saw on January sixth, the storming of the Capitol, these you know armed uh, terrorists. Um, are they, have they slunk back into their holes or uh, are we still going to argue some more from them? I think they will probably be out there in full force. You know, the FBI and other, you know, um, let's say pro-government um, agencies have, have been really doing their work, you know, and, and following these groups and so forth, forth. even though, I, you know, I would argue that they failed, that they got mm -hmm. to the extent that it did. Uh, last Wednesday, you know, that was just too far. But, you know, they, they're monitoring social media. It's obvious that the attack on the Capitol was planned um, on social media beforehand. And then Trump's empowerment, you know, through his speech just kind of set it over the edge. But um, I don't think they've crawled back into their holes. I expect them to be at um, their local and state, you know, buildings the, and perhaps even outside of the Capitol building. I understand they have a barrier up, you know, for a protest. I don't think it'll escalate to the point that it did. But in terms of the fascist danger being over, I don't think so. I think um, extreme right politicians like Ted Cruz and uh, Tom Cotton, I think they're, you know, just getting ready for the next for the next presidential election to continue, you know, what we now understand as Trumpism, you know, Trump's brand of neo-fascism, whatever you want to call it. And so I don't think we're, we're, the fascist danger has been defeated. I think it has uh, suffered a major setback across the board since, you know, the masses of Americans came out, you know, especially Georgia is the best example and really turned the tides of things. You know, we are entering a new political moment, but I don't think it's the end of the fascist danger now. Okay. And um, Anita, what, what is this, I don't know, what, what are we learning about the, the organizing forces of the, of the fascist danger? Um, oh, that's an excellent question, Scott, because I, in fact, um, today I issued my uh, newsletter and we had something in there about who's really behind the uh, money uh, because it was a very expensive um, march, uh, uh, so-called March for America or March for Trump that was taking place in Washington on uh, January 6th. Um, there was a lot of money spent in robocalls and so, and so forth, um, calling supporters and telling them to come to Washington and how wild it would be. Um, and we're finding out something about who those people are. And it's the usual suspects. Um, also, uh, a lot of organizations that have also suddenly gone dark on their Facebook pages, for example. Uh, uh, Women for America is one, mm -hmm. Women for Trump. Um, uh, the, the, even the, um, the organization that Phyllis Schlafly founded uh, uh, is, is active. Um, so, so there's, yeah, there's some dark money involved uh, here that, you know, they're, they're uh, super PACs that don't disclose their donors who are paying for footing the bill for the whole thing. And that, that calls to mind, you know, the, the, the classic definition of, of fascism that, that we are the understanding of fascism that, that we work with, which is that um, it is fundamentally a movement of a section of the bourgeoisie, the most violent, most reactionary uh, section of the capitalist class um, who provides the, the, the leadership, the organization, the capacity and recruits a mass base from other uh, sections of the population. Right. But um, Michael, um, you mentioned the, you know, the FBI and other government agencies, law enforcement agencies now 
doing their work. Um, you know, we're coming out of a moment where we're talking about, or in a moment where we're talking about things like, you know, abolish the police and, and, and state violence and, uh, and things like that. So, you know, what, what's, what's the stance on, on, you know, the use of uh, state power, the use of, of law enforcement, federal law enforcement to um, uh, arrest and investigate arrest and, and prosecute these uh, folks that were involved in the coup? Well, that's interesting because, you know, objectively, when you see these videos of um, the people storming, you know, violently storming Congress, you know, and they were armed, they were breaking windows, they were firing into the chamber. Objectively, you say the security guards, the security, not, and this isn't the DC police, this is the, the Capitol building uh, security was overwhelmed. They were understaffed or whatever you want to call it. They weren't prepared for such a big, at the same time, you can also watch the footage and say, wow, they really didn't put up much of a fight. You know, some of them were fighting for their lives, but, you know, they were easily, the, the barriers were broken through and so forth. And then they have really, you know, FBI and other groups have looked into some, you know, this uh, facial recognition that they have uh, through the cameras. And they've recognized current and foreign member, uh, uh, former members of the military, um, off-staff police, you know, off-duty police, um, who were members of the crowd, who were members mm -hmm. of the crowd, you know. And so I think, A, it helps to have uh, members of law enforcement if you're a member of these extreme right movements. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, too, as we've known for a very long time, you know, if we look back, you know, to a century ago in the Ku Klux Klan, there are members of the extreme right who infiltrate the, the police and so forth and carry on their, their agendas there. I don't know. I can't say to what extent this happened at the Capitol building, but um, I do know that, you know, our, our comrades in D.C., the Communist Party in D.C., put out a statement on CPUSA.org, um, kind of, you know, their analysis of the situation. And they're worried now that these um, the National Guard has been deployed and so forth. And the Democratic leadership in D.C. is really uh, putting down the foot with these kind of protests. What's going to happen when we, you know, um, let's say our left center alliance starts marching again with the Black Lives Matter movements? What happens when another young, innocent black person is killed by the police? Are we going to be treated the same? Are we going to be treated like these extreme right, you know? So we wonder what, what, what how the state's going to react now to any kind of protest going forth, um, especially in, uh, particularly in DC. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Anita, what do you think? I, I think Michael raises a really good question. You know, um, is this, uh, as more and more resources get poured into I don't know, the national security state or whatever, is that going to um, bounce bounce back against uh, against the left somehow or uh right i know in, in ohio and florida they're they're passing they're going in the opposite direction and uh they tried to pass laws in both those states to make it more easy to arrest protesters at peaceful demonstrations and since the attack on the capitol ron DeSantis down here um in, in florida the governor who is very pro-trump um, was saying, see, this is why we need this anti-protester bill because of, you know, this is what could happen. So um, it's just insidious how they're using even their own misdeeds uh, to, uh, to, to put further on um, limits on uh, what, the, what the people's movement can do. So it's, it's really, that is a danger um, I, I can see in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. definitely. And it seems like part of it would be that, um, so we're, we're, we're in a fight right now, um, a, a democratic struggle over whether the, um, uh, the government will respond to the needs of the people or whether it will uh, compromise uh, with, the, with the extreme right, whether it will continue to carve out a space as we've seen. Um, you know, how long the FBI has known for year, a decade at least, um, that uh, these, these extreme right forces are working with and working in law enforcement and, and has done nothing about it. So the question is, you know, can we sort of bend that to, to the needs of the people or, or not? And, and the question, maybe of whether it bounces back against us is, is well, going to be whether we can keep the pressure on. 
I think we should, uh, on the local level, keep the pressure up. And when we find out that a, that a, a person in our community's uh, police force is associated with uh, one of these right-wing uh, white supremacist groups or is seen wearing the uh, regalia or the, the symbols of such groups, I think we need to lean on our city council persons and others to, and the media, the local media, to really um, show that that's not acceptable and demand that something, uh, something that, that that person is removed from the position where uh, he usually he uh, has access to weapons and and uh, and the power to restrain people and all kinds of other, you know, um, powers that that police officers or law enforcement officers can can use. Right. Yeah. Um, so our, our part of our work is to keep that that pressure on uh, as well. I, I like that idea. That's uh, um, so. In terms of meeting the needs of the people, big news on the prospect for a stimulus package, right? Um, uh, what was what? what one point nine billion? Trillion. Trill one. Sorry, yes, one point nine trillion. Wow, that's a that's a big number. What's in it? <laughs> a lot of money. What's in that, Michael? What what's in the stimulus package? And uh, the most recent one coming the, out? The one that Biden has proposed. Oh, the one that Biden has proposed, I believe, is $2,000 uh, for the people who qualify for it, which is a much bigger, um, I guess, amount than the, the, than the $600, which, you know, there was a lot of interesting analysis of that $600, you know, which was right after the Christmas holidays uh, that, that was passed. And, um, you know, for most people living in the United States, the $600 didn't even put a dent and everything that they were owing. You know, you talk to these people who have been unemployed since March, so it's almost been a year. You know, it's been over 10 months now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, $600, what's that gonna do? But, you know, $2,000 had that been passed, especially before the Christmas holiday, right? That could have helped a lot of families, you know, buy gifts for their children, you know, pay rent. Um, the moratorium on rent um, and, and a lot of states I understand has um, ended, you know, now you know, December 31st. And so people are in the difficult position of, you know, am I going to get evicted or so forth? So I think it's a good move. It's better than what's been done, but we can do so much more. And it actually is, uh, well, I think it's actually $1,400. So to bring it up to 2000, but, um, but it also includes a lot of funds for um, state and local governments to, uh, to fight the COVID uh, 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 epidemic, pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, it's uh, vaccines, um, you know, uh, a PPE, uh, uh, all kinds of things, uh, contact tracing. So really to get a handle on the, the pandemic and that will uh, ultimately help the economy. And Biden is not afraid of deficit spending, mm -hmm. um, which is I think a kind of a modern thing. Again, it's, a ba we're, it's back because it's just the government lending money to the economy so that it can uh, function and, and rebuild itself. So I don't think we need to be afraid of, of deficit economy. Obviously the Republicans with their huge tax uh, cuts for themselves weren't really afraid of deficit spending either, but they're going to start talking about it as if it's a, as if, as if it's a thing that we need to worry about, but I don't think- right, they, get, they get, as, as soon as money's being spent on anything that helps the people, they get very concerned. Yeah very, very concerned about, uh, um, about deficits. It also includes, I think, money, uh, a huge amount of money to help schools reopen safely for in-person learning, which is, that's been one of the, the, the hardest parts of this because remote learning is not ideal for students, especially uh, students who, um, uh, who, who are already struggling with various things in the, in the school context. Um, in-person learning is better, but you can't, you know, do that when it's not, when you don't have the, the funds to do it safely. Um, so that's great. Uh, and uh, the unemployment uh, is extended. Also, the, the supplemental uh, mm -hmm. payment uh, is in Biden's plan, $400 a week, um, which is not what it was before, but it's, it's something and it will go until September. Um, oh, which is uh, which is a big deal. Um, so let's hope that you know with the new configuration of the Senate that it that it can that it can move through. But you know how how much how much have things changed, 
right? Is this a, are we in a substantially new political moment, new possibilities, or are we still caught in the same uh, set of struggles as before? Uh, I think it really depends on how fast um, the Biden administration, you know, Congress, with the House and the Senate, now that it's controlled by the Democrats, how fast they act. I definitely don't think this is a fascist moment anymore, um, if, if we could call it extreme right moment, whatever we want to call it. But, you know, um, Biden's really been, I've watched recent interviews, you know, where he takes questions and people are really expecting all of these things that he promised, you know, the student debt forgiveness, immigration reform, they're expecting it right off the bat, along with the stimulus package we just talked about. And so um, it is a new moment, but are the people going to feel this new moment right away? I don't know. They're really going to have to act fast because, as you said, you know, what if we, what can be done before September, before that unemployment runs out? You know, are they going to have to extend it again? Will schools be open? You know what I mean? And so we'll have to see. It's definitely a new moment, but how how fast I think that the masses of working Americans are going to feel that new moment, mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. Okay. Adina, Adina. I would agree with that, definitely. You know, it's a, it, we, we really have to see what happens, but keep the momentum up uh, in people's movements, demands for uh, things like the PRO Act, um, which would, and, and for... Uh, I, I harp on this, but DC uh, statehood and all those things that will really kind of ensure us um, the people's movement of future in, uh, in a future seat at the table for uh, policy making in the future. So $15 minimum wage, I can see that going right away. And these are policies that are really important and popular among all people. So, yeah. so. And, and, and it's what we always say, like, the, when, when these things happen, these kind of changes, it's not because, you know, uh, CEOs had a change of heart or because Joe Biden's eyes were open to the misery of, it's because we organize and we struggle and at all sorts of levels from, you know, mass protests to electoral organizing to, um, you know, labor organizing, it, um, it all goes toward that. So, uh, we have some uh, events coming up uh, this week or in the next couple of weeks. Um, we have a, a webinar this Sunday, Anita? It's Sunday, exactly. Um, the, uh, I think it's at, at noon Eastern. Um, it's uh, Vijay Prashad uh, speaking about Venezuela. So that should be really good. Um, and I think uh, the best way to to uh, register for that is to go to the Communist Party USA Facebook page. Yep, yep. there will be a, re a registration the link, link on the Facebook page. Um, so we hope to see many of you there. Uh, we'll also be having a national committee meeting on January 23rd. Uh, the national committee is the, the body of the party that's elected by the convention to, to lead the party in between uh, conventions. 